Happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome into the Graham Lincoln McLean podcast. It's a wake Wednesday. Wake Forest Wednesday. We're going to break down the Demon Deacons. Mac, let's start with this, though. Uh, g- give our listeners a little bit of a disclaimer, because we did record this Dave Plossen interview um, over a month ago. <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, it's been quite some time since we had this conversation with Coach Clawson. Obviously, you know, everything ha- has changed with the, the horrible news about Sam Hartman and, and just thoughts and prayers to him, his family. Mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine what... Uh, what that's like my senior year, potentially last year of college football. And, and we have no idea. I mean, I, I don't know what the deal is. I know it, they said it's a non-football deal. Um, that it sounded like there was a little procedure. And yeah. again, Sam, just thoughts and prayers to you, my man. Hope you get back as soon as possible, as safe as possible. Um, because th- this game, man, it, it just, it means so much to all of us. I mean, it, it, every student athlete, the, th- the, the blood, sweat, and tears and time and effort and, you know, just the commitment that you put in this game and, and how quickly it can be taken mm. away from us. Just, it, it really sucks. It, it really does. And and so big time thoughts to you, Sam, and, and excited to, to see your return and, and hope that's sooner than later. But, you know, guys, it's still a team that has a lot of talent and it's still a coaching staff that, man, they hang their hat on development and, and they get guys. I mean, Sam Hartman coming into Wake Forest, nobody knew who he was. No, right. Nobody knew who this guy that eventually would throw 50 touchdowns or or be responsible for 50 touchdowns in a season would end up being. And and so a lot of people counting them out. I'm not saying they're, they're competing for a a division championship without him. Uh, But I think this team is still talented enough. Um, They'll find a way to win. And I'm excited to see it. Sounds like Mitch Griffiths is going to be the guy, Mm -hmm. not a lot of experience, KG, Um, somebody that's really going to have to ease into it. But let's get into this conversation. And just remember, guys, this is like a month ago, Um, (laughs) but we'll, we'll react to it on the back end. Here we go. Coach, welcome into the podcast. Super excited to have you today. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks for, uh, for having me on. Do, do you get to breathe a little bit? It, it seems like the farther that I've gotten from playing, it's like football never stops. And it really didn't then. But now with the portal, with all the camps that y'all can have, recruiting never stops. Have you ever, have you been able to unplug? Do, have you taken any trips? Have you gone anywhere? Not at all. Um, <laughs> Are there any in the pipeline? Are there any coming? Yeah. Uh, so okay, usually <laughs> I was, I was talking to some coaches about this last week. Uh, June used to be the catch your breath month. Mm. You know, you'd have camps. In these camps, you'd actually get to teach young people football. You'd teach them how to throw a ball and how to catch it and how to get into a stance. And now this is like the new December. This is when, you know, the the camps are more about recruiting and less about teaching. We're doing official, unofficial visits. It's every single weekend. And, you know, I remember 25 years ago that you would take the summer and you'd split it up into six weeks, and you'd always have two coaches that covered the office, um, and the rest of the guys could come in and out, go on vacation, and you'd catch your breath. And because of all these different things and all the demands, the job has just changed so much that you really don't get a chance to catch your breath until the dead period, which is coming up on Monday. Coach, yeah, things have changed. Uh, we know that in college football for sure. We'll talk about that a little bit. But I would say, too, and, you know, you've, you've been at Wake Forest for a while now and you've established quite the program. But coming off of this season where you win the division and you, you play for an ACC title and now you're having camps, has anything changed there? Have we seen a few more kids showing up? Is, is the vibe a little different? Yeah, it's, it's all incremental. Uh, you know, you you get little better players to visit when you go from three and nine to seven and six and win a bowl. And then, you know, when you win a, a bowl like the Belk Bowl and beat a team like Texas A&M and get to eight wins, it gets a little bit better. And, you know, now that we got to the ACC championship and we got to our sixth straight bowl and won f- four of them, you know, it's, it's just incremental jumps. Um, but I think if anything, like you're scared to death to ever – put your foot on the brakes, right? You just, you want to keep making the program better and every step that you step up, that next step gets that much harder. Uh, You know, so I I don't know if this is ever a profession that you can take a deep breath, relax and enjoy it. Um, You know, you just, you, you keep 
you know, you got to double digit wins, you want to get there again. You got to the ACC championship game, you want to try to get back there again and and try to win it. Um, you want to get to another bowl. You want to have other good recruits. Uh, I think there's a paranoid nature to all coaches that you know about that you just never allow yourself to relax, but that's also why we love the job. It's so competitive. <laughs> Coach, I think you've done a great job at all those things that you just said and, and elevating this program. It's It's been really fun, just not only as a person that covers this, but as a fan of the ACC to see you know what you have done at that program, to see the elevation, and then the commitment you know, from the administration, from the university and the things that you guys are building. And it's just really cool. So I want to just jump into your team because you guys have so much talent and we could, we could do a two hour podcast right here, but we're going to get you out. Um, and, and you have so much talent around you. I think it's going to be another really exceptional year for you guys. And, and starting with your quarterback and Sam Hardman, a guy that had 50 touchdowns last year, only two other people have ever done that in this conference. And yet, when I look at lists, when I look at, at teams and, and names and you know top 10 in the country, I don't see him. And, and it, it just, I don't understand it. And I'm not even going to say disrespected. I just think it's undervalued. It's another step backwards. And I don't get it. I don't understand why. Well, e- even the network you work for just put out the top four quarterbacks in the league. Coach, we were just talking about it, by the yeah, way. And I didn't have anything to do with it. It's unbelievable. That, and, Whew. you know, again, all those quarterbacks that are on that list, we have great respect for. Uh, I mean, Devin Leary is an outstanding player, and Malik Cunningham is really, really good. And, you know, we play we played those guys, and we know how good they are and how much respect we have for them. But we think our quarterback's pretty good, too. And obviously the league coaches felt that way because they voted him to be the second-team All-ACC quarterback last year. And the guy that was voted ahead of him, who was a Heisman Trophy finalist, got drafted. So I just find it miraculous that, you know, all the experts that work for your network suddenly think that our quarterback has gotten that much worse since he won the MVP of the Gator Bowl. <laughs> just wait for this him, expert. I watched, coming. <laughs> I watched him in spring and I, I thought he got better. But wow. again, apparently people at your network um, who know more about football than the league coaches <laughs> – uh, don't feel that way. So, you know, it's, uh, again, it's it's just fuel. That's all it is. I, well, Mac, this I, I wanna... was a great day to choose to wear our, our ACN right, shirts. Right. We what somehow, we showed what up, we're like, oh my God, we're both matching. And now this, <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, no, I, I, I want to ask again, you. I just, I find it remarkable that the social media experts at your network are such great evaluators of quarterback talent that <laughs> that's right. They feel that's they know right. quarterbacks better than the league coaches. So it, it's uh, also to uh, to create discussion and fire and, and get yeah. people riled up. But uh, Sam Hartman needs to be on the graphic. I think he does. we all agree here. He does. He does. And I want to ask you about that, Coach. Again, like, does and, he... and I'm not saying that any of those other guys don't because I've yeah, watched sure. all those five. guys play, and I mean, they're good. Yeah, all those no guys. Doubt. I mean, we played against Virginia last year, and we saw Miami on film, and you know, Malik and Devin we saw live, and those guys are outstanding, and they're good leaders, they're great athletes. I mean, great respect for them, but we certainly think our guy is is right there um, with the better quarterbacks in the league. I, and I do too, and you'll see that in the coming months. I'll tag you in it so I know you see it. Um, but I want to ask you about Sam. Like, does he care? Does that? piss him off? Does he text you and be like, this is unbelievable. What else can I do? You know, or I, I, does it just keep going? I think one of the great things um, about Sam, Eric and Kelly is Sam's been through a lot of things in his life and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't major in minors, you know, as his head coach, I, I feel an obligation to stand up for our players and, and our quarterback and one of the leaders of our program. Um, but I don't think Sam worries about those things. I mean, he's really focused on his team, his teammates, getting better. Um, I just think, again, it's highly irresponsible for whoever runs your social media network to do that. I think it's, I, I think that's wrong. But again, uh, I'll worry about it. I don't want Sam to. And uh, again, just keep wearing those t-shirts. Keeps keeps reminding me. <laughs> yeah, we we made some great choices here on this. Uh, not knowing, but made some great choices, obviously. I like that you brought up that he was second team all ACC because some people do forget that. Some might assume it was Leary or whatever, but 
look, the numbers and the production spoke for themselves. And we were able to have Sam on last year. I mean, great guy, great interview, obviously going to go on to do big things no matter what. But I also found it so fascinating, his mental health discussions that he was talking with us about. And you could notice that kind of his first couple years at Wake, the talent was obvious. But if he threw a pick, you could see maybe some frustration. And, and some quarterbacks, they throw a pick, they just move on. It's different. What have you seen from him in terms of growth in that mental aspect of the game? I, I think it's been uh, tremendous. And as much as he's had physical growth, you know, we're out here running camps when Sam first came here, weighed 147 pounds in high school. <laughs> and now he's 217 pounds. He's strong. He's faster. Um, but I think it's with a lot of things that when you invest in others, you actually invest in yourself. And the growth from Sam has been how much he's invested in his teammates. Mm. You know, that Sam always had the talent. Um, but I think investing in his teammates, spending time with A.T. Perry last summer when A.T. wasn't projected to be a starter for us. And then Donovan Green goes down. And part of the reason A.T. Perry had the year he had uh, is because of all that time Sam invested in him. And, you know, the old saying in life, when you invest in others, you end up getting more out of it. You know, it's the, the, you get there's more rewards from giving a gift than getting one. Um, and I think the payback for Sam's investment in his teammates comes that there's a group of men that want to play for Sam Hartman. The old linemen want to block for him. The receivers want to get open for him. The running backs want to protect for him. And he's just become an unbelievable leader for our program. And he's become really uh, selfless, which with skilled players in, an, you know, in a world of name image likeness and things like that is, uh, is priceless for us. I love that, Coach. I think you bring up a great example there with A.T. Perry, and I want to jump into that wide receiver room because you guys, I mean, it's loaded, and you do an unbelievable job at developing, you know, talent, wide receiver talent these last couple of years. It's just been freaky to see, you know, the guys that you guys have, have taken in and then what they look like when they leave, and, and especially looking at this next year. I mean, there's four guys returning with 30-plus receptions or 400-plus yards and then we're adding Donovan Green, who I think is going to be a bona fide superstar. What are the expectations of that room this fall? I think it's it's just to get better. Uh, as you know, Eric uh, and Kelly, that no matter what sport you play, right, it's a day-by-day -day process. People see the, the result on the field, but it's all those little efforts before you ever get there that really make the difference. And I think for our program um, – you know, staying hungry, staying humble. Uh, as I said to somebody else, like your new starting point doesn't become your ending point from the year before. You know, the 2022 team has not won one game. Um, we have a great, I think, a loaded division. And, you know, people are always going to talk about Clemson and Dabo has obviously built an incredible program and you know, David NC State has done a great job, but, you know, I think Louisville, you know, Syracuse um, were games last year that we, you know, those were tight games for us. We won one with a last second field goal and the other one with a, uh, in overtime and the job that Jeff Halfley's doing at BC and Mike Norvell at Florida State. I mean, I just think there's a bunch of programs on our side of the division that are just ascending. And if you get too focused on one or two teams, you know, any one of those teams can show up and beat any one of those teams on any given day. It's a great division. And uh, so, again, you know, we're just trying to win the first one and get better. And if you get ahead of yourselves and say, you know, hey, we're trying to get here again, that will never happen in this league. You bring up the division, and we actually interviewed Dave Doran last week, and same thing. I mean, he brought up the Atlantic and – and how loaded this division is. And it really should get the respect that these other, you know, the SEC West and all these types of divisions do. But speaking of that wide receiver room, I assume, Coach, look, you're going to go to bat for your guys, as you just emphasized with Sam Hartman. Uh, you would take this wide receiver room over any in the country? I mean, I, th I think a lot of people would when you look at this roster. You know, Kelly, I don't look at everyone else's receiver room. Um, I'm sure there's other receiver rooms that feel they're really good as well. I like the guys we have. I think we have a lot of proven players. You know, you have a Torian Perry, who's a returning all ACC player. 
uh, Donovan Green that we really thought last year would be his breakout all ACC year. Um, Taylor Marin, very quietly to the outside world, but not in our building, had a great season, made so many big plays for us. You know, the touchdown against Virginia, the touchdown uh, against Louisville, uh, so many big plays. And then Keyshawn Williams had a great year as well. And then we got some younger guys like Jamal Banks and Horatio Fields that we think have great upside. And so that's a position that you got to stay healthy at with the tempo that our offense plays at and the amount of plays that we run. You better have five or six guys that can give you plays and give you reps. Uh, so again, we, we feel good about the group, but um, you know, it's your job to compare receiver rooms and quarterbacks. Uh, we like our group. <laughs> And, uh, and we feel really good about them. And uh, I'm sure there's other teams in the country that would feel the same way about their group. Yeah, I, I was going to bite that bullet for you, Coach. I'll go ahead and tell you, you're pretty good. And, and you've got really good wide receivers. The depth of that room, the emergence that I think that we are going to see from some of those young guys. And again, I go back to Green. Um, like you, I, I had those huge expectations. I'm not with them every day like you are and, and the things that you can see. But I knew it was there. And uh, I think it's, it's going to be a really special group for you. How about the Beef Boys up front, man? I, I feel like they're so underrated. You knew when it, it was coming. Yeah, and, and this is a common theme. And I hate we keep saying it. I'm sorry. And I know you hate it too. But th those guys deserve a lot of credit. And the things that they've been able to do in your tenure while you've been there, the development that you've been able to have. Big Sean uh, this next year coming in. Big Michael. Um, man, they're an impressive unit that really truly embody that you know whole collective move is five, move is one, one move is five. And it's been fun to watch. Yeah, I don't think they've been underrated. We've had three guys drafted in the last four years. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And, uh, you know, what, what I love about that room is I can walk into that room and I feel I finally have a group that's of my generation. We have a seventh-year right tackle. Our top three guards are all in their sixth year. Um, our fifth-year guys, uh, Michael Jurgens is the center. The youngest guy in the group is our fourth-year left tackle. You know, so I can go in there and, and listen to Yacht Rock Radio and those guys like the, <laughs> like the music too, right? Like they, you know, they know Steely Dan and the Doobie Brothers and music like that. So that's what's so cool about that group for me. So <laughs> it's, it's an older group now. There's a lot of reps, a lot of experience. And I told Coach Tobacco this uh, and our staff. I think one of the greatest compliments that you can have as a coach is when guys – have the option to come back for a fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh year, and they still want to come back. Mm. It tells you they're enjoying the experience. They feel they're improving. They're getting better. Values being added to their lives, not just as football players. And, and it's an older group. And on the offensive line, if you're older, it means you're pretty strong. And so these guys have been trained in a college Division I weight room by outstanding strength coaches for five, six, seven years. And so we've got some strength, we got some experience, and we also have a group of young guys that are going to get another year of seasoning before they have to play. So we're in, in great shape on the O-line. Mac, I think we can go with the Yacht Rock O-line, something like that. We're going we're gonna to work on that. <laughs> the that Doobie Brothers, hilarious. baby, come on. <laughs> Somewhat of my generation. That is really funny, Coach. Okay, <laughs> we got to talk a little defense. If Mac and I were, if we had our way, we'd talk offense all day. But look, we got to talk defense. You brought in a new defensive coordinator, Coach Lambert. How excited are you about him coming in? And what do you expect from this defense? I, I saw a lot of improvement. You know, the great thing about Brad is he's worked at Wake Forest before. Mm -hmm. Yes. And again, we, uh, you know, Wake is a very, very unique school in the Power Five landscape because of the academics, the size of the school. And so to have somebody that spent 10 years of his career here, and, and back when he was here, you know, Wake used to win on defense, right? They won the ACC championship nine to six. And, uh, you know, Coach Lambert was a, a big part of those defenses. And James Adams, the safeties coach, played on those defenses. And so I have a guy that is a proven Power Five defensive coordinator from his time at Wake and Purdue. He's been a call, you know, Division One head coach from his time at Charlotte. And so you know he understands Power Five football and how to play defense. He understands Wake Forest, and his recruiting connections are all in an area around North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, and Virginia, which we hit hard. And so he checked every box, but his energy, his enthusiasm. And, uh, you know, sometimes it just is healthy to hear a new voice. 
And I, I think the, the players have bought into him and, uh, you know, it's been a, a good change. And again, we, we had good coaches here before, but I think sometimes, you know, change is good. And uh, he's done a great job and he definitely has the players captivated. Uh, but we're undefeated since he's been here and we haven't given up a point. <laughs> you know, so it's the challenge comes, you know, the challenge is coming and he knows it. He's very aware of it. You know, you put uh, all those quarterbacks yeah. uh, on a graphic uh, that didn't include ours, by the way. But <laughs> he he knows he knows who he has to defend. There says, as you were talking about the quarterbacks in this league and, you know, th- those are guys that we have to defend. And that's not an easy task. What what have you seen from guys like Rondell, like Ryan, like Nick Anderson? I mean, you're, you're, you're leaders and just to name a few. I'm sure there's plenty of others. But what have you seen from them, I guess, with this new addition, new defensive coordinator comes in? What, was it kind of like a sub meeting with with those guys and, and your leaders and elite players where it's like, OK, let's do this. Let's buy in. Let's understand what we have to do because we have to get better to be able to take you know this next step and be a championship football team. Well, I mean, a, a year ago, we were a championship team. Um, but, you know, if we could have played a little better defense in a few games, you know, where could we have been? You know, we're, we're probably two wins away from maybe being in the college football playoff. Right. Um, and, I, you know, I think our defensive guys, and it's really the reverse of what it was five years ago. When we first got here, we played good defense and we struggled on offense. And I think the offensive guys were tired of that. Now it's kind of flipped. Um, and what I saw in the spring was probably the most balanced team we've had. Um, we've made steps on defense. There's no question. Uh, you know, I, I think there was buy-in, not because of what we're doing, but because of who's doing it. You know, Brad's been a head coach. He's built relationships with the whole team. The amount of time that he's invested in all of our players, you know, taking guys out to eat, having them into the office, developing a relationship with them. And he's somebody that they want to play for. And so it's, again, right now, uh, I feel really good about it. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. I think every player knows that. Uh, and again, it'll, you know, the challenge will come in the season. But part of the things I judge as the head coach is the competitiveness between the offense and the defense. And we had one of the top offenses in the country last year, and we have nine starters returning. And in the spring, our defense probably held up against our offense as well as they have in four or five years. Wow. Wow. All right, well, I want to follow up on that before we let you get out of here because that just – it made some PTSD strike. When your offense has a great day and your defense has an okay day, but obviously the offense won – like, what's your mindset in that team huddle as you're closing practice? Like, are you cussing the defense out saying, this is unbelievable, and then the offense is like, what the heck, coach? We had a good day. Well, first what what off, do you do there? First off, if you if you come to a Wake Forest practice, you won't hear cussing. <laughs> At all? So, I don't know, coach. Bring, don't bring, lie to us. Bring your kids. Our, our <laughs> athletic director, Ron Wellman, used to bring his grandchildren and felt very comfortable. Um, you know, but football, there's always some tough love. And I think as the head coach, right, there's always a balance. Okay, did the offense have a good day because they executed at a high level? Right. Or were there defensive breakdowns? And to me, what I look for is good football. And what's good football? Everybody does their job and there's a three-yard play and the unblocked guy is fitting up the ball carrier. And then at that point, your athlete's got to take over. Right? If you're going to be good on defense, at some point you got to get off a block uh, you got to have block destruction. You got to make a play in space. And on offense, you got to make a guy miss and you got to block your guy. And so the film evaluation is always, okay, why did the play occur? And if it, because it was great execution that came down to a matchup, that's something you can live with. If it's because there was a massive breakdown, a, a wrong assignment, bad technique, those are the things that will get your football team beat. Um, and so those are always the things that we harp on. You know, you, you always want to look at the process, not always the result. Thanks again to Dave Clawson for joining us. He had some thoughts, Mac, on uh, <laughs> Sam Hartman and maybe some of the disrespect that he gets. And so that was really fun that we chose to wear our ACC network. <laughs> t-shirts that day both of us but you know it was all in good fun I really like coach Clawson and 
he was more he was he was mad at the disrespect he wasn't mad at us sure so listen we didn't don't, make that graphic <laughs> coach don't don't get mad at the, the the intern that made a graphic all right let's, yeah. let's just pump the brake we and, know that sam's the real deal yeah everyone knows how good sam Hartman is and that's why this discussion has really been changed with wake but let's right. look at the big picture here wake finished 11 and 3 last year 7 and 1 in the acc one of the very best seasons in school history it was a great year they won the atlantic they won the gator bowl over rutgers because texas a&m was too scared to play him and now we've got the sam hartman news so here's what mitch griffiths the new guy who who's every, everyone said that this is going to be the guy to uh, play in sam hartman's absence he said this will be sam's team this will be his team this year my job is when he is ready to give him the keys back ready for us to play in Charlotte. I just want to help the team be ready to play in Charlotte. That's our end goal. So here's the thing about Hartman, and there's it was very vague, non-football related condition is what the statement from Wake Forest said. And of course, Wake's a private school, so with HIPAA, they're going to probably take that even more seriously, so we're just not going to, to hear what's going on. But he's not out for the season necessarily. It does say indefinitely. So he could return, and, and that's kind of what Mitch Griffiths was implying. And I think this schedule, especially early, shapes up to where they can be in decent shape. But we'll get to that in a little bit, Mac. Without Sam Hartman, we don't really know what to expect from Griffiths, but we do know that this wide receiver room in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, is loaded with yeah. dudes, <laughs> one of the best in the country. No, there's no question about that. I mean, they have – it makes it easier, right, for, for the guy coming in, for right. a quarterback coming in when you have guys that are this good and when you have proven guys. I mean, it's not like we're we're expecting, you know, a big jump and, yeah, this is the year. That these guys have already done it. They're back. And, and so that has to be a, a confidence factor for you as a quarterback. Um, it's just going to be getting on the same page. And, and if I'm Griffiths, man, I, I am – putting in so many hours i'm yeah. asking and begging those guys to stay after practice to come before practice on the weekend and, and camp and all this let's just go throw let's just get used to each other running these routes and i'm sure they've had crossover and individual and things like that so it's not you know like this guy just walked on to, to campus um but it's certainly going to be a, a learning curve and it's certainly going to be a, a, a new team just seeing what this young man can do. But A.T. Perry, it, just a monster basketball player in, in a football uniform. You look at Donovan Green, look mm -hmm. at Taylor Marin, just, you know, two guys that, that are going to be exceptional. And so when you add all three on the field at the same time, great things can still happen. This offensive line is going to be tremendous. This guy's going to have time to throw the football, the running attack. I know that, you know, CBS left and, and transferred mm -hmm. to South Carolina, but still have a great room there. So this offense still should be just systematically should still be fantastic. And and if they can, you know, just get a little bit out of Mitch, you know, you, you hope that they can really get that going. And as you said, that schedule first three games, you, you, you hope that that is enough of a preparation to when, you know, you see the big dog at home and Clemson comes to town. Right. And A.T. Perry really is that dude. So I think <laughs> Griffiths is going to be in good hands. A.T. Perry, I just want to add this in here, Mac. One of three wide receivers in major conferences last year to catch 15-plus touchdowns. The other two, Jameson Williams and Jordan Addison. So, <laughs> so a, fir a first-round draft pick and yeah. the, uh, the Blitnikoff. So pretty good company there, bud. <laughs> He's, he, is, he is that dude for sure. Let's talk defense here. New defensive coordinator, which we talked about with Dave Clawson, Brad Lambert, who was at Wake Forest back when Wake won the ACC title. And this is a defense that gave up 42-plus points five times last year. But they did create 29 turnovers, which is exceptional. So <laughs> if you can be a little better against the run, a little right. better in terms of containing and still force turnovers, I think there's a lot of room for instant improvement here with right. this defense. Kind of similar to Miami, a new voice, a new message. And Dave Clawson seemed to think that as well. Yeah, and just have to step up. I mean, the fact that they gave up that many points so many times mm -hmm. is, is just – it's crazy, and I get it. Like the, the offense probably put them in these adverse situations because they score so quickly yeah, and they're, they're moving the ball. Um, but you, you just have to be better than that. And the, and the turnovers were great. I mean, they were balling, number one in the country at, at you know halfway through the season or something of that nature. So continue that. Get better at stopping the run. Just get you know big Rondell out on the edge. Let him get after the the quarterback. Mm -hmm. He was exceptional doing that a year ago, and was awesome talking to him at ACC Media Day. So. 
You just have to see those guys step up and really in, in the middle and these linebackers um, be much better against the run. And, and schematically, you've got to think that'll change and uh, you know just get people excited and get them going. Mm -hmm. And as Clawson said, Lambert has been at Wake before, so he understands right. the dynamic, how right. much they need to develop and all these things. So I think mm -hmm. he is a really good fit and a new voice there. Uh, one of the bigger losses for Wake is losing Nick Skiba, one of the best kickers in college football history. Right. So <laughs> that's going to be interesting to see how they replace him and, and how important that is. But again, with this schedule, and I really want to get into this, Mac, because I think this is a big talking point here. The win total from Vegas is eight and a half. When you look at their non-conference, all right, open with VMI, at Vanderbilt, Liberty. I think, honestly, and this is going to sound bad probably, I think I could play quarterback, and you probably win those three. <laughs> Liberty without Malik Willis, of course. And the at Vandy, okay, you're at Vandy, you should win that. So, and, and my point is, Mac, if I'm at quarterback, by the way, I was a powder puff quarterback, so let's be real here. I mean, I can sling it. But I've got A.T. Perry, I've got Taylor Moran, I've got Donovan Green. I feel fine, okay? I'm winning those first three games. Highlight of this episode, <laughs> I can sling it. No doubt about it. Texas girl, you know those Texas quarterbacks, man, they, they can they can rip it, man. They, they can right. do it. I, I'm with you. I mean, I just <laughs> – it's one of those things, though, unfortunately, I'm going to have to see it before I can tell. Well, I have Matt, no idea. It's BMI no and idea. Bandy. Come I, on. I just – I don't know if the guy can throw a forward pass. I mean, oh, he didn't man. do one last year, so I, I just I have to see, and that's all I'm saying. And, and it, it's you know maybe I need to call coach and go to practice and just see what's going yeah. on and and how does he do because it, it is good. It's a great warm up. It's it's great that they can have these games and and get it going. But you know, win total, I'm not touching it. I have no, no. idea. I don't know when Sam's you coming can't. back. I don't know how good this guy's going to be. I have no idea, and I'm not going to be disrespectful and just say when Sam's gone, oh, it's it's over, you know, get under for sure. I, I just I have no clue. So maybe we reevaluate Wake after the Vanderbilt game, and we'll say, okay, you know, this, this guy's got it. He's got something yeah. special, and we'll we'll see there. Well, and again, we don't know non-football related condition. No idea. Out indefinitely, but just being <laughs> hopeful here for Wake fans. Yeah. I think again with me at quarterback, you could start four and two. Beat VMI, Vandy, Liberty, and Army. Lose to Clemson and at Florida State, let's say. And then you have a bye week. Right. So if he can come back, I mean, that's six, seven weeks from the start of the season. So from now, it's like 10 weeks. If he can come back around October 15th, that's your bye week, and then you host Boston College. Yeah. Look, your season can be salvaged. And this is a right. huge if. But I'm just saying, this is not. This is a, this is a schedule that is, that is back loaded. So right. that does help. It does, and again, just just hoping Sam gets back as as healthy and as safe and as quick as possible. Um, wish we knew, but we, but we don't. And uh, again, we'll, we'll we'll see. Time will tell what what uh, Wake Forest is going to look like moving forward. So, big shout out to Willie P, our guy. Thank you so much for setting this up, Coach Clawson, coming on here. Always great talking with him and and, and again, with him. Coach, we're sorry about uh, that graphic. We had nothing to but, do. With it. That's right. I'm sending him my ACC. It was funny because right shirt. after our interview, the graphic was deleted. <laughs> Yikes. Um, yeah, you know, every everything corrects itself. But, guys, go check out our producer's podcast, Rich Take on Sports. He does a great job on there. So many fun stories, all the, the sports things you can think about and how to deal with that in life. He's got it. It's a lot of fun there. He also does a great job on, on the radio and, of course, producing this show, making mm. us sound and look fantastic. But that's it. Another great episode of Gramlick and McLean. If you don't have SiriusXM, Go get it right now. Subscribe. Write them a letter, as KG loves when I say. Go knock on their door. Whatever you got to do uh, to get SiriusXM so you can listen to us any way possible. But we also need you to go over YouTube. We also need you to go over yeah. Apple Podcasts. Subscribe. Rate, review, subscribe. Come on. It's great hearing from you guys. We would greatly appreciate that. But until next time, we'll see you all.